Hi, George family. My name is Amanda Rang. I am a licensed professional counselor intern here at Counseling a Second. I wanted to make this video today to assist with those who are struggling with anxiety during this challenging time. Of course, it is normal to feel anxiety right now, and while we all need to allow ourselves the space to feel these feelings, we also need to give ourselves the permission to let them go. Some anxiety is productive, do not get me wrong, and motivates us to wash our hands and distance ourselves from others when there's an important reason to do so. If we weren't reasonably worried, none of us would be taking these measures and the virus would spread even more. But the problem becomes when unproductive anxiety, that unchecked rumination, can make our mind spin in all kinds of frightening directions. Instead of helping us stay in the present, our anxiety spins stories about the future. So before I give you some grounding tools to keep you in the present, I want to point us back to the scripture and how the Lord spoke to Elijah when he was motivated by fear in 1 Kings 19. You know, Elijah is, stands out one of, those, one of those greatest prophets, and he exuded great courage in the face of evil. He fearlessly confronted King Ahab and false prophets of Baal. Yet when Queen Jezebel threatened to kill him, he reacted in fear and literally ran for his life. He prayed to God, he lost his appetite, and his thinking was so disturbed. God responded mercifully to Elijah and did not condemn him for his condition. God provided rest and food and then encouraged Elijah to continue his ministry. The call to help others is a common antidote to disabling the self-absorption we feel and anxiety. Through all this, Elijah learned that the Lord would never forsake him. Even in the depths of anxiety and depression, God showed a loving concern for him. And I kind of want to bring that through these grounding tools of when you're feeling that overwhelming is to remind yourself what, where you are in the present time, right? Do not worry about tomorrow. Worry about today, as it says in Matthew 6. One of my favorite grounding tools is called the high five. I like it because you get to use all of your senses and it really doesn't take a lot of time. The first thing you do in the high five is find five things that you can see. Find things that you didn't notice in the room before. Maybe it's like a plug that is open and seen and people can see and you didn't realize it was there. Um, next, find four things you can touch. Four things in the room that you can touch um, that you didn't notice before. Notice the different textures. Notice um, how the floor feels different than your clothing or how the floor feels different than your couch or your couch texture is different than your clothes. Three things that you can hear. Try to close your eyes and take some deep breaths and notice what you're hearing around the room and around your house, around your apartment. Are you hearing your upstairs neighbors? Are you hearing your children playing outside? Are you hearing arguing? What, what's going on? What are you hearing? Two things you can smell. Is it the candle you just lit? Is it a dirty diaper? I don't know. Whatever those things are, find two things that you can smell. And then ask yourself, what can I taste on my tongue? What do I want to taste on my tongue? Maybe that means go make yourself a cup of coffee. Find a piece of chocolate. Find something that you enjoy and just take a moment and just kind of bring yourself back to the present. Next thing, one of my favorite things too, is create a personalized self-love kit. Include your favorite verse from scripture in it. Find a video on YouTube with your favorite noises. Maybe it's a, a video of the city. Maybe it's a video of, um, I don't know, dogs barking if you like that noise. Or if it's um, crickets chirping because you grew up on a farm or if you grew up in a rural area. Maybe you need to pet your cat or your dog or write, write all your favorite things down, write memories down, write fun things down. What's your favorite color? What's your favorite memory with all these people in your life? Or maybe it's, you know what, I just need to take a 20 minute nap. Whatever that is, make yourself a personalized self-love kit in that moment. Last thing, if you have children, they might be feeling anxious too for different reasons. They haven't got to see their friends either. They're stuck at home too. But what an opportunity you have right now being home with them to show them how to deal with it, right? The biggest way that kids learn is by modeling. So first, talk about it with them. Give them a place to speak about it. Give them a place to speak about their anxiety. Tell them that you're anxious too. But second, find a way to eliminate it for them with them, right? Find a progressive relaxation video on YouTube that you can both watch and follow along. I'll put one of my favorite videos in the comments for kiddos. This one's pretty much for elementary school age, but they love it. They absolutely love it. 
I'm praying for our whole sweet church family at this time. Please let us know if there's anything that we can do for you. Leave a comment down below for more video requests if you want some more videos of kind of what to do during this time. Please reach out. Don't be scared to. We're praying for you. We love you. Um, and look out for some more videos to come.